Hey everybody, what's up? Mike Tony here, and today we're going to be working on drawing the male proportions. So, um, <clears throat> what I like to do for my male proportions, or when I first started off, at least, um, I started off using an eight head proportion. So, what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to take two lines, draw one at the top. I'm going to take another line, draw one at the bottom. Now, it doesn't matter how long this line is because we're just going to be breaking this up in equal parts anyway. Uh, now we're going to draw a vertical line. Uh, what I'm doing to make my line so straight is I'm using the shift button. So if you hold shift, you can get a straight line and drop it down here. And this is just going to be our guide uh, for how we want the character set up. So something I learned that's made it pretty easy to break down these this uh, eight head proportion is just by dividing everything in half. Um, so if you just take your pen, just mark out where you think the half line is, and I'm going to say it's about right here. And then um, you want to break the bottom part in half as well. And then now you want to break each of these individual pieces in half. Now you have eight heads. So let's just label this one, two, three, oops, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So um, I use this as like my little uh, technique. Once I la lay this down here, I just make a couple of lines. Uh, and we're just going to go on another layer and we're going to make the lines in blue. And I just do a couple of lines across. And what, and what this does is... It just helps me um, practice this over and over and over again. So here we go. And just take these vertical lines across. Now they are a little skewed because um, I'm moving a little quickly. But what you want to do to change that is you can just bring up a grid. And you can just keep everything lined up on a grid. Um, and then I'll draw certain amount of vertical lines based on how many characters I want to do. So uh, let's say I'll do two. I'll do a six head and I'll do like maybe a four head person. There you go. I will just do one line here at the end. All right. And let's see. Just making a couple adjustments here. All right. So on this eight head here, I'm just going to give you a couple landmarks. Um, you got the chin right here. And then the next one down, you're going to kind of have the mid chest or the nipples. Sorry, my handwriting is absolutely terrible. The third one, you're going to have the belly button. I'm just going to put belly B. Uh, fourth one, you're going to have the crotch. Fifth one is going to be right where your fingertips land, which should be right around mid thigh. Um, obviously, proportions for characters change, uh, and uh, you know, based on your character design. So these are really just guides. You you don't have to really be married to these things. Um, it's just something that, that you want to kind of keep in mind. So the bottom of six, you're going to have your knees. Mid seven is just going to be mid calf, or uh, yeah, mid calf or mid femur. And then obviously eight feet. Now, this is going to change for every um, character that we end up doing, uh, you know, as the heads get smaller. But what you need to understand is like the crotch is really where the halfway point is on most characters if you're not going for like this extreme version or you're you know altering the proportion too drastically uh, <clears throat> so yeah we're just gonna start off with the head circle here chin here let me go with something a brush that's a little bit softer too all right there we go. All 
All right. Now, something else that you want to know is like right now I'm drawing the mail. So um, what we basically say for the mail is that it's about he's about three heads wide. Uh, and for females, she's about like uh, like one like a half a head on each side. Um, so for me, I just like I'll draw like a circle, a circle here just to let me know where I want the shoulders and everything else like that to kind of lie. I'm gonna do the neck here, and then we're just gonna draw the collarbone, which is about one third into the second head. So you say one third into the second head is where your collarbone is going to be. And your traps, <clears throat> uh, they don't go concave like this. They're actually, they're actually like this. Um, and is, there should be a slight curve when you do them. The more you make that curve, the more jacked your character will look. All right, I'm not going to get in detail for, with muscle, but I just kind of wanted to say that because I see that uh, happen a lot where people kind of do this. So um, collarbone, bring that around, shoulders here. And so what I like to do is like once I kind of get my collarbone in and the shoulders in, I actually like to jump to the, where the crotch is and I draw a V. Because that's kind of more of that superhero shape you're kind of looking for is that V. Now it's a little bit more extreme and accentuated in you know, uh, Western art based on the musculature. So you, you know, they'll actually pull the lats out a little bit, um, your lateral muscle here, and then that will help intensify the V. Um, but here I'm just gonna make kind of a plain, uh, slim anime-ish character. Then I start from the navel here. And essentially, I just draw a straight line. And I use this as a little bit of a guide because I will eventually change this and break this up a little bit. So um, when I do the oh, now <clears throat> at the crotch, I just very quickly um, make a line here where the leg would be. I do kind of a little C shape on both the legs. Let me make sure there's enough space for the hips. Give me a second. Because a lot of this right now, for the proportions that we're trying to practice, we just want to kind of get lines down. And then from there, we'll break it down even more. So uh, I'm actually going to open the legs up a little bit and give them a little bit of a stance. So what I do with the legs is I kind of do this C motion. And, um, and let me put it in a different color. It might be a little bit easier to see. So this will be like a thigh, your kneecap, and then this will be your calf. And so, you know, that really helps me. Um, instead of going into detail with musculature and everything else like that, you don't need to really focus on that yet, uh, especially when you're just trying to lay down a puppet uh, so you can get your character just kind of situated and set up. calf and then what I do for the feet I just take a diagonal line on the inside from the inside to the out remember that your big toe is on the inside and then I just draw a couple lines out like this and that's just how I quickly kind of make a foot once you um, the whole idea about this is just simplifying everything and then once you start drawing from life, once you start learning anatomy, you can start adding your anatomy in afterwards. Um, it is important to kind of know simultaneously. But when you're starting out, you get a lot of people who want who skip those steps and they don't understand. Uh, and I was one of those people who definitely skipped the steps and learned the proportions first and then realized, man, this doesn't look that good because something is missing. And it's understanding the anatomy. It's understanding the musculature of um, the characters that you're trying to develop and build. So, got this here. And you see the kneecaps, <clears throat> you know, um, 
I make them right, right around kind of the bottom third of the six. And I just do that based on like my character design and my uh, and my experience when you know I'm, I'm drawing from life and everything else like that. This is how big I feel like the proportion of the the kneecap is taken up of the leg. All right, now we're gonna jump up here to the arms. And so I actually learned this from um, Sykra and I like to do what he calls the lightning bolt method. And it's just a quick way to get an arm in with a little bit of musculature. So you basically do this lightning bolt here and then you just connect the lines. Bam. And then you remember your fingertips is kind of right around here, mid thigh. Okay, you rest of your palm thumb your fingers here so um, with that lightning bolt method it's simple you just and another color we're gonna go here 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 and here and then you simply have um, an arm so <clears throat> That's something I do just to quickly get it in. And I and I do these um, kind of proportional drawings a lot uh, traditionally when I'm just trying to develop a new character. I have an idea for a character and I want to kind of push it. Uh, so I'll go along and just do something very quickly just to get it down. And then I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's this character going to be wearing? Uh, what era is he from? This is when I'm thinking about character design and everything else like that. And uh, little techniques like the lightning bolt method really, really help um, to get things along because we're not really focusing on uh, uh, the muscles or anything like that. So, yeah, I made this one of those arms too long, too short. Yeah. All right, I'll just box this arm. Let me redo it. That's the great thing about digital. You just kind of edit, undo. You're saving uh, materials too. All right, so I realized this entire time I've been drawing on my blue layer, which I wasn't going to get rid of. Um, so that way you can just see the proportional body, but I think I'm going to do that on the, uh, the six head portion. So this is how I do my uh, eight head male proportion. I try to simplify it. Obviously, this is not like, it's not... Um, anatomically correct per se i don't have all of the muscles in i don't have you know i kind of everything defined this is more just the puppet this is more just uh learning the type of um learning the type of physique you kind of want your uh character to have and that's important because you can try this eight head figure <clears throat> and do multiple physiques um, and it, and that that to me I find is the most helpful with this technique as well as trying to figure out the age of your character so the the smaller you go obviously in heads the age is the ages start to change for your character and I'm gonna try to display that uh, right now so we're gonna do a say six and a half seven head kid here so we know the head's gonna be, know the head's gonna be somewhere right around here. And so a lot of the same rules will apply. For example, the collarbone being one third down. Draw a little neck here. The head. Um, the shoulders being about one head on each side. They'll come in a little bit because the character has a smaller frame. But, um, you know, it, it really will depend on the type of style that you're going for. Then you want to recognize, okay, well, the character 
his waistline is going to be half of him. So you got to kind of really judge that out and say, okay, boom. Here. So you also have to remember when you're drawing a male character, his hips um, are going to be smaller than his shoulders. And that's how you're going to kind of get that male uh, V-ish shape. When you draw females, normally the hips or ladies, the hips are wider than the shoulders. And that's how you kind of get that feminine figure. So you just want to keep that in mind when you're drawing. If you wonder why your character is... Uh, you feel like it, it, he might be looking a little feminine, uh, and that could be an issue, is the fact that uh, that uh, the hips are a little bit wider than the shoulders. And a lot of the times you may get that um, issue if you are drawing something in a different perspective. So here again, I'm just like, I know that the kneecaps are going to be that halfway point down to where the ground is. So I'm draw drawing that. And then I know once I hit the ground, using my little uh, C curves that I have going, I do the, the triangle for the feet. So <clears throat> the reason why we practice this and we do this is uh, you want you, you want to kind of remember this. You want to remember what this proportion feels like um, for your character, because then what that will do is when you are drawing, um, let's say your comic book or you know any any type of artwork that you're doing, um, what happens is your your mind will interpret that proportion whenever you're drawing. And I'll give you an example of that later. Uh, and you'll see how like this, when you start off using this or you practice using this method uh, every so often and you get a better understanding of the proportions and the physique of your character, that when you start drawing using, you know, drawing from life or using gestures or whatever it is, or you're doing your own original artwork, you'll see how that kind of caters into that. So. Um, now let's get rid of this blue frame here. So you see I have this slimmer uh, character, obviously, or well, this slimmer puppet. Doesn't look that great right now. Um, but that's not the point. The point is um, for you to be able to get the proportions and stuff like that in there. And once you understand your proportions and everything else, you want to start going in and understanding like where the bottom of the ribs would be where the pelvis would be, and that's how you're gonna get a lot more of that detail and more realistic um, kind of outline and physique of your character. Like right now, I'm gonna bring his lats out a little bit so you feel like he's a little bit muscular, at least in his back. Um, tricep, and then around. So once you... Uh, <clears throat> Have an understanding of these proportions and you go okay i like a six and a half or a seven head character you can then go on and um and you know okay well you know okay well um i know that the elbow is halfway of the body and i know that if i take this arm and bend it up halfway that the hand will you know be right here where my head is or if I take the arm and I take where the elbow is and I um, rotate that upward from its point here let's do this in blue and I rotate it up here I know that the arm is gonna 
be the furthest out is going to be is here. I know if I take that and I rotate it up here, that the further the arm, the furthest the elbow can be is right here, where the head is. So now, if I wanted to like draw something where I take this arm, well, let's get rid of it here, and we'll leave it ghosted, and we'll use and we'll draw in blue. I'm going to take that arm from here, and I'm going to bring it up over here. with a little bit of foreshortening. Bring it a little slightly forward. And I know that this is the forearm <clears throat> is just another, is basically another half, a double of that. I can take that, come out here, and make it so my character's arm is out here. Or I can bend that, knowing that that is halfway here, And voila. So you can start taking those proportions that you learn and understand, and you can start creating your own poses and your own gestures from that. So, um, and now, like, that's me doing it from a stiff position, right? So now let me draw something that is uh, a little bit more, let's say, active, right? Um, zoom out a little bit. Let's say the character is, uh, hmm. All right, let's just lay something down. The head here, Put body, pelvis, and the character is, I don't know, doing a jumping jack, right? So you see me drawing the stick figures right now. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out, okay, what's the halfway point from my elbow to the bottom of my ribs here and then to mid-thigh here. And I'm doing all of that calculation from what I had remembered <clears throat> from my portions. And then now I know how long my forearm is going to be because I know the length of my forearm and the length of my bicep and my shoulder are, are right around the same. Your neck here, and your shoulder's going to come up. Shoulder's going to come up here. This is very rough. So you start to take those um, <clears throat> different landmarks and you can reinterpret them into your own gestures. Thumbs on the inside, thumbs on the inside. And uh, Instead of doing a jumping jack, maybe he's just falling. So you see how now I'm doing the legs. I'm trying to keep in mind how long the legs are going to be and then how long the femur is going to be, your shin is going to be in comparison to that. And constantly just using these as checks and balances. The knee. So, uh, because he's falling, maybe his feet are just down like this. But you see how now I've bent my character's legs a little bit. I have a better understanding of kind of how long and how short things are supposed to be. And 
it still looks proportional, even though he's not just kind of standing straight and stiff. You know, so um, if you practice this, I guarantee you without even thinking about it, your body will just kind of start to remember um, how long things are supposed to be. And so, you know, I, I see some people who are beginning, they get this thing where they draw a character and let's say his one hand is down. And then the other hand is like up. Then they get this thing where like the other hand is very, very short. And, um, and, uh, they don't, they don't understand why or, or why, like they can't get their character to look a certain way is because they're neglecting the proportions. Cause now if you take this little arm here and you, let's say we cut it out or actually, you know what, let's take the whole arm, right? We're going to take this whole arm here and cut it out and just rotate it down. And you realize it's not even remotely as long as the other one. And that's because the, the person um, doesn't really have a clear understanding of, uh, of uh, the proportion. And you know, it's all right. Um, you know, that ha happened to me a lot in the beginning. I think it happens to everybody who's learning to, to draw. Like most of us, I feel like, are not just all off the bat, solidly talented artists that just get it right away. You just have to work at it and draw every day. So the more you uh, understand these portions, the more you understand these landmarks, um, that will help you have a better understanding when you're doing, you know, anything. You want to draw something that is uh, out of perspective, um, for example. Do something quick here, and I'll say the character's hands coming toward me. What I'm now basing the um, proportions off of is each relationship to um, each body part. So um, that's why you learn like what is close to what, where these lines are to the crotch, where the elbow is to the ribs. Um, how long that distance is from the shoulder to the legs, because then I actually like this pose and I might end up using it. Um, yeah, I'm actually, yeah, there's a couple things that are off right now, but I'm actually really getting into this. Let me not get lost in this. All right. So <clears throat> what I like to do is I try to use the relationship um between the connecting uh other limbs and stuff like that and how that will look now if i brought this elbow down here like is that going to line up with the ribs even though it's in perspective you know um will it line up here where the head is so for a while you're going to have to be conscious of that um and then forearm. For a while, you're going to have to be conscious of that. And then as you start drawing more and more, your body will just remember it. Your mind will just remember it. It will become muscle memory. Um, so the idea is just practice your proportions, especially if you feel like you're a beginner or, or, or a quote-unquote novice or whatnot. Um, practice it at least once a day. Um, I guarantee you by the fifth or sixth day, you'll really feel comfortable with it. And then it'll just kind of become part of your normal drawing ritual. So I hope this video uh, was helpful. I hope you get a better understanding uh, and an easier way to kind of draw the male proportion. If you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to draw every day. I'll see you guys next time.